Hello, everyone. Welcome to the ICCBE CIBW70A Virtual Joint Conference 2020. Uh, this is a session of 5A. I'm the session chair, Sunshine Patrick Shi. I'm a professor uh, from the National Taiwan University. I'm here to serve you as a chair. Um, I think uh, most of the presenter knows the rules. Uh, we are using 20 slides, and each slide has uh, 20 seconds, and it will be automatically uh, wrong. So now uh, I'm going to invite our first speaker, uh, Fumio Atori. Please. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Hattori from Hitachi Plant Construction in Japan. So uh, let me explain about the development of beam based 4D simulation system for construction schedule planning. Okay, next, please. Now, there are uh, high expectations for the use of ICT in construction field for the safety management and for the productivity improvement. Use of BIM is a major technology innovation, and it is said to change the future of construction site. We are carrying out the construction of power plant. The power plant has a huge number of pipes and the construction site is very complex. I think it is effective to visualize the construction process by BIM to understand the situation at the time of construction. But to use for the simulation function, it is necessary to take a lot of manpower for setting. On the other hand, construction schedule planning still depends on few skilled managers, and their retirement is approaching, which is an agent issued for Japan. We understood a skilled manager had some rules. They can imagine the construction procedure in their mind. To make free use of BIM, uh, it is necessary to not only software function, but also this knowledge of practical work. And this is a concept of a process planning system. BIM with spatial information plus construction information such as scaffoldings plus standard process sequence between the based expert knowledge, then it became possible to automatically create a standard process visualization. These are the points of this development. And uh, creation standard rules, acquisition of special information, automatic scaffolding model, and being based for the simulation function. This is a standard sequence example by the skilled manager. Generally, piping to be installed at the higher position are first carried in and temporary lifting. The next common scaffolding for assembling at higher position is set. After that, the equipment is carried in and installed. Then piping are carried in at the lower position than the scaffoldings. And finally, piping at the lower position would be installed. This figure shows the sequence schematically as I explained previous slide. At first, we choose the construction planning area and divide the inside into upper and lower area and set their scaffoldings. And we set the carrying entrance for product. Then the order of carrying product can be decided based on the location of each product. Location data can be obtained from BIM special information, and it is possible to automatically set the data for the simulation with these rules. Okay, next. Uh, 
Uh, I'd like to explain about automatic scaffolding model creation. We developed a function for these two types of scaffolding model. Scaffolding model also would be creating by the beam spatial information and by interactively inputting conditions. This table shows the automatic drawing procedure. Acquisition of scaffolding, uh, acquisition of surrounding area spe special data and set it as setting parameter for scaffolding model. The distance between column and the scaffolding is decided according to standard scale of material. This is the result in which scaffolding model is added to the original beam model. The scaffolding model automatically drawn by the system make it possible to know the number of standard components required in planning area. And this is also the important construction information adding into beam model. This figure shows the setting screen of the carrying entrance position. In this example, the carrying entrance is set on the right side of this figure, and product is carried in from here. This is a screenshot automatic creation of process and visualization result. We plan common scaffoldings for set at the height of 2.5 meter. At first, piping is carried in from a place further from the entrance and temporarily suspended. Product in the upper area is continued to carry in after the upper area finished to carry in. Then uh, scaffoldings are set at height of 2.5 meter from the floor. After that, uh, equipment is carried in from a place further from the entrance and lower position product carried in and temporary set in order. System can output the movie file, these simulation result, and we can understand the situation in construction time visually. And this table shows the evaluation result of the system applied. By using this system in total, 6.4 hours for setting time of 4D simulation can be reduced. It is expected to be reduced by 80% compared with the conventional manual method. We developed the systems mainly have the two functions. The first is the function that automatically sets the installation sequence using the knowledge of expert and the special information of BIM. The other is a function that interactively creates a 3D model of scaffolding using the special information of BIM by, and by using system in total for the simulation setting time is expected to be reduced by about 80%. That's all my presentation. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Um, we will have five presentations uh, patients, and then we have a Q&A session. So now uh, I would like to invite our second speaker, Frank Xu. Thank you, Patrick. And uh, good morning, Europe, and good afternoon, Asia. So uh, in this talk, I would like to uh, share some experience and uh, some thoughts on the uh, digital training of construction objects. And uh, the scope will be look like uh, we will conclude some uh, existing studies on the post estimation because post is one important feature in the digital twin. Okay, so three parts. First, uh, I would like to uh, differentiate the scope of the concept of digital twin of post estimation and three kind of uh, construction objects. Then we will have a review and we'll discuss what we can learn from existing studies. Okay, first, uh, digital twin is a relatively new concept. So it was so-called a virtual re replica of a physical object and with several features. First is across the life cycle of the object. Second, it uses real-time data. 
The third is enable understanding, learning, and uh, reasoning. So you can see it's uh, it's on the top uh, red box. And in contrast, if you know the term so called the CPS, cyber physical system, it was a bigger box. So uh, we can we can see the digital twin is the first half. That means to monitor the physical system. But the CPS we also like to control the, the system. So we say digital twin is the first half of the CPS. And then about the construction objects, you know, we, we, we really wish to have the uh, digital replicas with the real time data. The aim for us is to uh, trace and control, perhaps control these uh, construction objects. So we have three different types, components, equipments, and humans. Yeah, so pose, pose is a kind of composition of the position orientation and potential purposes. So if you look like, uh, into the degree of freedom, you can see the for each component has have at least six, and there will be more degree of freedoms for equipment and also for human. So since the task is to relate the re physical system to a digital replica, therefore this is a typical task of machine learning. So we can use the machine learning concept to have a four class taxonomy, including the non-learning, supervised learning, reinforcement learning, and also the unsupervised learning. So for the non-learning, we also we call the filtering. The principle is to use predefined rules and also the equations to, comp to calculate and to filter the data. For example, in this one, we use the UWB census. Uh, no, 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 it's from the John. And for this example, they use the IMU census to trace the, uh, the trunk of worker, and they use the rule, so called the, the trunk inclination is no more than six degrees in, to predict the uh, bad poses. This example is for a uh, component. So you can use the IMU sensor, GPS sensor, plus the altimeters and uh, filter this data with the velocity filter, especially on the z-axis. And in, as a result, we can have the 4D hoist uh, trace uh, for some purposes, including small swings. And for the supervised, the, actually the, the input knowledge is, is not the direct rule, but kind of indirect uh, data samples with labels. For example, this example, they, uh, they use six labels of the actions of the cranes. So mobile cranes and from the photo and the key features, and they can predict what pose is the equipment is doing. And this sample, the, the target is the uh, factory pipeline system. And they use a LIDAR point cloud and with the spin lines and uh, the principle of the point vectors, to predict whether it's a straight uh, pipe or it's a curved elbow. And finally, they can reconstruct the network. And in this example, the, the data source was the camera photos and the target label is the poses, 2D poses. And finally, they combine the 2D poses together and the results will be resulting a 3D poses. That would be much more useful, you know, for safety and uh, other applications. For the reinforcement learning, uh, this example, it uh, provides a penalty function. Penalty function that means if you arbitrarily put a 3D post there, there will be a, a function error function tells you the 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 distance of the furniture and the measured point cloud. And for the unsupervised learning uh, studies, we'll use the other features rather than the target label features. For example, the, in this example, they use the intensity of the freezer and also the color of the points to predict whether it's uh, polywood or it's fact, it's the, it's the other defects. And this, this example, they uh, also cluster the LiDAR point clouds and uh, with the 3D grids and also 3D shape descriptors. And finally, they have some uh, different point clusters and indicating what which part would be more like equipment. 
So what, what we can conclude here is first, the filtering methods, I mean, the non-learning methods and the supervised learning methods are much more frequently used in the literature. And uh, in contrast, the reinforcement and unsupervised are less reported. We can find some empty cells in the combination here. And if you look into the performance, actually the best performance in terms of the accuracy and uh, timeliness, the filtering is the, is the best class. And the next best class is the supervised learning. But here there will be a very interesting question, whether the artificial is more is better than intelligence, because you can see the filtering is artificial. Okay, about the inexpensive, accident, the, the two are uh, reinforcement learning and also the unsupervised learning. So here we can have a trade-off. If you would like to have some faster processing, then the reinforcement and unsupervised will be better. So what we can uh, learn here is post estimation is one of the key tasks for a digital training. And that we can have a four class taxonomy. So if you wish to have uh, some high accurate method, you may look into the filtering and supervised. Otherwise, you can try the unsupervised. OK, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Frank. Now I would like to invite our third speaker, Matthews. Hello. Yeah, Matthews. Yeah. Hello. Hi. So, whenever you are ready. You know, yeah, I'm ready. Right. So. right. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Mateus Alvesariva, and I will talk about implementation, performance, and waste management analysis of decentralized wastewater treatment system using BIM technology. And guys. For a faster presentation, I will refer decentralized wastewater treatment system as DWATS, okay? DWATS, my name, me and Andrea Araujo are the authors of this survey and we, uh, let's go, let's go. So it's known that sanitation best spreads are fundamental to promote public health, protect the environment and others. However, according to the World Health Organization data, today around 2 point billion people's, people still lack adequate sanitation facilities. Overall, in developing countries, only 49% of their population have served service. Uh, th that's, that is also a reality in Brazil, where sewer service reaches 53.2% of its population and only 46.3% of wastewater gen generated in 218 had treatment according to the National Sanitation Information System. Uh, well, despite the low cover rate of swear service in developing countries, the odds are alternatives to ensure public health and to maintain the environment integrity. They are those which collect, treat, and make the final disposal in a place close to its generation, like what happened in traditional centralized, centralized systems, as we can see in the image of real vivo. So this decentralization is complementary to the centralization of wastewater treatment, reducing the capital investments and increasing the accessibility of uh, these companies. So the challenge to implementation the systems are the choosing of the most appropriate rewards for each situation, taking into account local characteristics such as climate, ecosystem, environment, and culture, and although there is a wide range of the what's available, many people are not aware of the various possibilities. So the solution adopted in the design process directly reflects on the constructor process and on the final quality. The B methodology fits in the scenario as a possibility for progressive productivity. And not just that, it can influence our knowledge about unknowing system during the design process. And Although there are several kinds of research regarding BIM technology, there are still few works that focus in attention and drug and sanitation design process. This context is reflected in the market where most of still work in a segmented manner and always meet and not always meet the needs of users. So our purpose 
our purpose was develop development of artifacts with the potential to fill gaps as the adequacy of sustainable parameters, the incorporation of ICT concepts, adequate information for the what's implementation, favor learning about the main types of systems, and the ease access to different components. For this work, we use the design science research method, and it was conducted by six steps. The relevance of the problem, mentioned in the pre previous slides, design as an artifact, design evaluation, design contribution, design as a research process, and research communication. Our artifact was eight DWATS families that professionals could use in the design process. They are biogester septic tank, evaporator inspiration tank, construction wetlands or garden filter, banana circle and arab filter, sand filter, vermi filter, and soak pit. Uh, for um, the families were modeled in the, the software had the design all, and all parameters were configured in a high level of development to guarantee all the expect, uh, expected contributions. All the families were grouped in a rep template that make it possible to evaluate and study each one of them. Each family was named and configured according to uh, Adi Watts Brazilian book. In the parameter group construction, the system size parameters are available. They are referenced on standards and concerts based on an input such as number of people, the equipment is automatically sized according to standards. By positioning the mouse cursor on some parameters, it is possible to analyze additional information. Construction parameters such as number of concrete rings can also be modified allowing the study of several possibilities and pipe geometers too. For, for the survey, evaluation and contributions, we made the families available to some professionals and, and after a questionnaire was elaborate to evaluate the possibilities contributions that the artifact in question could provide. So, so for the communication process, we made educational videos on YouTube for everyone access, talking about each one of the bots. And now the families are available on our website for downloads too. You can find them on darivabin.com. So let's close the results. The first question in the questionnaire was how the professionals classify the family's level of de development. And all of them answered that they consider it with a high LOD, that is 400 or 350. We have an inter interesting relationship here. Second question was how do you rate the control of information in families? And almost all of them answered great or very good. Related to this can be the fact that all the professionals answer that they learn during the design process. That is, the LOD can favor the learn from the design process. We also can see that most of the uh, most of them, all of them answer that or they use CAD blocks or they use low LOD families to design the watts. And we know that it's not the adequate method because it will not have sufficient information for the the correct construction. And the final question was, if the lack of the beam components arm the implementation in the architecture, engineer, or construction and construction sector, out of the professionals answered that fully agree or agree with the sentence. So what we conclude in the survey, the lack of beam components, either the presentation of these projects, the artifact product has the potential to provide possibilities and choice and product fee in the design process. And related to this can be the fact that beam components with high LOD can influence and learn during the design process. That is the virtualization of information in the design proper. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you, Marcus. Now, uh, I would like to invite our fourth speaker, Marcel Stepan. Yeah, Marcel. Yeah, welcome. Hello. Hi. So let's wait for the uh, PowerPoint and then, yeah. 
Okay, start. Yes. Hello, my name is Marcel Stepin. I'm a German researcher working at the Ruhr Universität Bochum and there at the Chair of Computing Engineering. And I would like to introduce our paper with the title Integrated Platform for Interactive and Collaborative Exploration of Tunnel Alignments. Next slide, please. In mechanized tunneling projects, an alignment describes a cost-efficient path. Multiple static alignments are explored at once, since investigations usually enable the establishment of alternative approaches. Evaluating a near-optimal alignment solution involves a multitude of empirical, analytical, and numerical methods. In, uh, conventionally, alignments are split into horizontal and vertical parts, which again are segmented into multiple curve types. And there are software solutions and methods that can handle alignment creation. Those applications are used by trained individuals or experts only. Creating alignments often uses straight lines for initial input, um, which are converted into an alignment by automatically inserting a mix of um, circular arcs and spiral curves. Some applications uses more traditional uh, approaches where segments are modeled separately and are merged by connecting start and end point of each section. Next slide. Alignments can be used as positioning elements to generate models, such as visualized in the figure on the right, where we generated a tunnel model based on an alignment and a tunnel cross section. They can also be used as an orientation for visualization of the built tunnel and detected settlements. This paper uses non-uniform rational B splines to represent the different curve types conventionally used to create um, alignment segments. NURBs are well-known tools in digital design of 3D models. They are highly adjustable curves that also enable local modification. The planning of alignments is assisted by a collection of model and map data, enabling further specification of geometric constraints and conditions. Large amounts of data are extensively collected by drilling boreholes, building shafts, mining and surveying. Data include, for example, ground and groundwater conditions. However, the method of creating multiple static variants of alignments does not take into account the potential solutions in between the pre-selection. It is to be expected that interactive modeling and planning of alignments could provide a wider range of possible solutions that would not be limited to a pre-selection. A collaborative approach between all decision makers could also provide a useful method for an ongoing creation and evaluation of alignments, especially by utilizing rumor devices with touch capabilities, such as touch tables, leading us to the question, how can a system for interactive and collaborative planning be conceived? To improve the current practice of planning and evaluating alignments and tunneling projects, an integrated platform is proposed. A multitude of aspects are considered, uh, resulting into a concept for software development. The platform implements and extends the approach of tunnel information modeling, in short, TIM. Considering the technological progress of modern touch devices, the challenges of interaction precision shifted from hardware to the software department, resulting in the development of interaction techniques such as takeoff or cross key that must be used as blueprints and modified according to the intended use. So, um, own iterations of interaction strategies and techniques has been derived from the known approaches. The lock-on strategy aims to improve the precision by first performing distance checks and mapping the interaction to the closest object. The area group strategy is designed to um, group interactions based on a threshold distance. The methods are tested by implementing a prototype of the integrated platform that is executed in a collaborative environment using touch tables. The prototype um, is composed of a 3D viewer with touch interactions, as well as panels for project steering and switching design tools. An alignment is created by stepwise inserting new segments between control points. Additionally, the cross key strategy will be used to improve precision. A gray colored curve is showing the preview of the alignment, further assisting the creation in a collaborative context.
Handling multiple interdependent curve segments of different types challenges local modification. Therefore, most application uses global modification, often performing changes on a larger scale than desired. By utilizing NURBS, local modification is enabled and can be adjusted at will. The user is able to establish a planning environment as shown in the figure. A 3D city model is geologically mapped onto different types of map data. We explicitly used open access servers and data that can be accessed in a restful manner. Using um, environmental landmarks, such as roads or buildings, enables the creation of alignments strategically. This also creates a sense of scale so that the position of created alignments can also be geologically identified. We implemented tools to create copies of alignments easily. Each copy is um, independent, enabling the creation of variants rather based on existing alignments than creating them from scratch. That way, variants can be created and compared quickly. For future development, we assume that introducing rule-based checking would enable to create a responsive environment with live feedback, as seen in the images. Uh, working with multiple data sources, we also find a collaborative approach between applications promising. Um, the keyword for that would be interoperability, interoperability between applications. Um, that's all for my presentation. Thanks for listening and have a nice day. Marcel. Okay, as I was told, that, uh, we are not going to have the presentation from the fifth paper. So now I would like to invite all the uh, speakers on this stage, and then uh, we can start our uh, Q&A session. We have already got uh, some questions uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the screen. So um, I think all the speakers can also see those uh, questions, right? Yeah, so the first one uh, is directed to our first speaker. Uh, the question is, uh, I'm wondering how the rules are being specified. They look very sophisticated and complex. Omeo? Yeah, yes. Uh, of course. Uh... There are many type of works, and uh, they have the rule of the each works. But uh, this time, I pick up the most common case of uh, works, and uh, we think we can define the standard rule or patterns uh, with. Uh, we can find it from the interviews of the skilled manager. And the point is uh, which product is uh, the first work when the, we have to uh, order the product work number is the, for the for the simulation. Uh, and that information is the, to decide the work order, the information is, almost all the information is, uh, we can uh, de decide from the special information from BIM. Yeah, so okay. Do, uh, do you allow uh, the user to or create an interface for the user to specify those rules? Mm -hmm. or we need a programmer or someone to actually implement the rules into uh, the, the program. Uh, uh, we developed this program uh, on the Navis Works add on mm -hmm. program, and we in, uh, interactively uh, set the uh, range of the planning area or, and uh, select the uh, setting point of the scaffoldings or something. Okay. So you have interactive uh, interface uh, to yes. interact with the user and then user just uh, specify some of the parameters 
uh, to set the rules, right? Uh, yeah, yes, okay. we have the program. Uh, we developed that, that kind of program. Yeah, yeah, program. Okay, thank you. And then we have a question. Uh, one question for uh, our uh, number two speaker um, is asking your thoughts on creating common tests and all training data set to make results reproducible and comparable within the scientific uh, community. Uh, yourself? Yes, very, yeah, very good question. And uh, you know, in, in other disciplines of engineering, we call it the benchmark uh, data set or the, or the benchmark problems. Yes. Yeah, I think one way to do it is we collect the, the uh, reputable uh, publications uh, data if they are open. And the, so at the very beginning, you can have some, some uh, results to compare with for, for, for your own. And the uh, the other uh, also you can integrate a new data set, uh, say from yourself and from other researchers. I think uh, the uh, W78, you know, the organizer of this conference, could be a, a good uh, community if if we, if uh, somebody of us wish to have such kind of a benchmark data set. And based on this kind of uh, data set, then we can compare a lot of different methods. But bear in mind that uh, even we have a benchmark data set, for example, we have 20 or 100 instances, but there still have some uh, minor bias because for any given data set, you can fine tune, you know, fine tune your algorithms mm -hmm. to, to try to adjust some small numbers and small mechanisms to, to get the win the, the number one. But it doesn't mean your algorithm will be the world number one in any case. So the benchmark will be a good idea, but uh, we cannot solely solely rely on the benchmark. That's just a, a ruler to you know, to show show the competitiveness uh, in to a, some certain extent. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So in your uh, study right now, um, you make your selection as um, uh, the maximum comparison, right? So uh, how do you choose those methods? Uh, I think that it's, uh, you know, for any method we, we are trying to employ, that will incur the cost first. And mm -hmm. also that will, the one it will interest you is uh, the performance. So, so different people will have different weights on, on the performance. Some people will prefer on the, uh, you know, less, less time the algorithms uh, takes and some people may prefer the high accuracy and uh, for the for the cost the people will look into their budget to see if they need to buy expensive for example the uwb solutions to get the, the accurate uh, the position or if they just uh, wish to have the uh, unsupervised method to to just have a very uh, preliminary understanding of different parts of their data you know they can have the cluster they have the group so they have the a very preliminary understanding. I think uh, it will depend on, on your uh, preference first. Okay. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> we have some questions for our uh, number three speaker, Marcius. Uh, the first one is, I'm wondering whether the BIM models for sanitation could be generalized for international approach. For example, not many banana circles in New Zealand. Uh, <clears throat> thank for the question, Robert. Uh, sure, uh, sure, sure. To implement any of the systems, uh, local properties must be evaluated. But uh, any system can be considered for implementation anywhere in the world. Okay. 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 So uh, let's move to the next question. I have seen that the focus of your survey was on the design process. Do you think it is interesting to use this family is also in the operation and maintenance stages for analysis? Oh, thank you for the question, Marcel. And sure, sure. It is very interesting to you. This family is also in the operation and maintenance states. Because the parameters configuring this in the families would work very well 
with the with what uh, hello um, so uh, it would work very well with uh, the internet of things concept for example and use the signals to evaluate some parameters that could warn a problem on the device for example it can be a future work nice so when you design those uh, um, components of uh, uh, families, how do you consider uh, the needs for, the, for example, the attributes for those family uh, uh, so that they can be used uh, in your design process, especially for analysis purposes? For? Do you need to design anything specific for analysis purposes? So uh, the families can then modify the, they they are they have parameters that can can be self-sized for the characteristics of a local or of a local, and the families have the, the parameters that you can study uh, number of people, for example, uh, characteristics of the environmental of the Price. Mm -hmm. So, if you if if you want to update these families for particular cases, you can attribute you can modify these parameters to 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 uh, determine uh, applicate for particular cases too. Okay, okay. thank you, um, masters. Now we have. Uh, one question is uh, for the, the last uh, presenter. Uh, can you share some details on the technology stack of the implementation? Any feedback from user yet? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, Marcel? We, yeah, um, you can hear me, right? Um, yeah. So um, the uh, technological stack is uh, quite large. Um, the, the most um, challenging uh, thing that we encountered during development is probably how the whole server structure should be organized. So we have a server that is um, managing a client and serving this client. And as I mentioned in my presentation, um, there are a lot of servers online. Um, basically, if we talk about the map data um, from uh, sites like OpenStreetMaps that we can access in a restful manner, and the whole tech uh, stack that um, we encounter is basically how do we interpret the data that we are transferring from A to B and how can we uh, visualize the whole concept. Um, so we're talking about uh, working with 3D viewers, interaction techniques for touch and mouse and tastature uh, and something like that. And uh, user feedback, um, we hadn't we had the opportunity to um, actually uh, get some hands-on tests right now. So we uh, finished currently the development of the prototype and uh, that would probably also be the next step, yeah. Okay. Um, in one of your slides, you show that you can do the comparison between different alignments, right? Mm -hmm. We also provide some tools to help the users uh, to compare uh, those two uh, options. Mm -hmm. um, as we mentioned in our conclusion, um, the next step we uh, try to implement is um, this um, uh, focus on, um, on, on, on rule checking, on, on, rule, on some rule-based um, okay. results that can be visualized. And that rules will support the decision-making of the variants. So right now we implemented tools to create a new variant variants very easily by uh, copying the whole alignment and adjusting it at will. So we can uh, kind of, um, if you look at, if you look at the map, we can kind of see okay maybe this, it's better to plan the alignment around a different street or around different parts of the city yes. than um, yeah around uh, the road that we originally planned. So something like that can be already compared visually but uh, we uh, currently um, try to develop a system where we can also do it uh, with rule-based systems. Yes, I'm just wondering uh, how uh, 
complex the decision making process uh, in the decision making process that usually the, the expert need, or the designer uh, need to consider uh, many factors, right? So maybe the cost, maybe the difficulty of the, uh, the construction and so on. So I, I'm just wondering, have you already talked to the users and uh, so they already give you some information about how, what kind of uh, information they would like to see in comparison? Uh, we uh, currently didn't have this kind of feedback, I would say. Okay. Okay. Still the next step, we kind of, uh, in our paper, we just wanted to present the, the whole yeah. concept of the implementation. Yeah. And okay. um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that would be very interesting if you, in the future, that you, you may share uh, these kind of experiences. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you uh, have any questions uh, to ask? Uh, uh, each other. Any of you? No? Or do we have any uh, final comments before we take a break? Okay, then uh, thank you all of you. Uh, very nice presentation. And uh, we will take a break and then we will resume uh, at. Uh, 55, okay? okay. Now, I also would like to thank all the uh, participants and um, of the nice questions that you have already raised. In the second half of our session, uh, we will have uh, another six papers uh, to present, to be presented. So please uh, stay with us. Okay, um, I was told that we don't need to uh, take a break. Uh, we can just uh, start a second half earlier. We don't need to follow the, uh, the time that's strictly. So, um, and our next uh, three presenters are already in the room. So, uh, I will start to invite our uh, next speaker. Um, on the stage, uh, Sun Xiang. Are you here? Hi, hi, hi. hi. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. So, Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, sorry, that I, I, okay, so, I have a busy trip right, today, yeah. so I have no choice to present my work in the carpet. Okay, our research topic is a framework for utilization of occupants to get to data to enhance building management. And my name is Shunxiang Xu, and we are the authors of the last book. Okay, here's our online. 
of a presentation in the beginning, I would like to say the background and motivation in introduction, as our framework was formed by doing an announcing new applications, the future will be shown in the presentation review and result. And in the end, our main contribution will be shown in the conclusion. Okay. Next slide, please. Uh, as people spend most of their time in the building, uh, the indoor environment should be highly related to the quality of daily life. And the purpose of building management is to maximize your comfort with limited resources, to better reach objectives, occupants' interaction with buildings or their behavior should be understood to make the most appropriate strategy. For example, lighting might be related to occupancy to automate the switch. Uh, while infiltration could be increased by both position and occupancy to better respond to emergency. To obtain this information, we can rely on the trajectory data. To collect the data, our team has developed a multi copy multi camera system, uh, which has presented as a both for building occupants. Uh, for this system, the trajectory of each occupant in different cameras can be connected by three major components uh, detector, tracker, and feature extractor. This system is usually decided for predictions in other papers. However, uh, this should be much more feasible in applying indoor requirement because the geometric relationship in different spaces remain constant. Can you unmute uh, your? So that okay. Yeah. Okay. Please continue. Yeah. No, no, no. Not, not a speaker. Uh, uh, what's wrong with my mic? Is, uh, from your side. Yeah. So, so what should I do? Oh, okay. Now it's better. Is better? Yeah. Okay. okay. So this system should be much more feasible in applying the because we thought the geometric relationship in different space remain constant. And entrance and exit like door will guarantee the loop of pocket. And by contrast, outdoor environment should be faced more uncertainty. Um, next slide, please. Okay. And the next slide. Thanks. Uh, this is a demo for the system. And the top presents the video from two cameras. The lower left presents a coordinate projection from image pixel to real world. And as can be seen, the trajectory of the same person in this video will become connected. This should provide building manager with a more holistic view of operation. And so far, as the advancement in monitoring technique, trajectory data become much more available than the past. However, there is few research emphasizing the utilization of increasing amount of data. This could cause managers less latitude for adopting data-driven strategies. Therefore, this paper wants to propose a framework for utilization of the trajectory data. To this end, we firstly search papers related to a topic and acknowledge them to form our framework. Five key factors are identified and applied to the review papers. The papers are collected from Scopus, which is the largest database of peer review literature. As shown above, we use three keywords to search for the reality work, and the numbers of searching results are listed below. By reviewing them one by one, only 22 papers are indeed meet our requirements. And by analyzing the paper, we propose a framework composed of purpose and data. In the aspect of purpose, we should clarify the application scenario in the very beginning, and then define the monitoring area belongs to public because monitoring private area should encounter a more serious privacy concern. At the last, for the aspect of data, we should define what kind of data is needed. As a result, we have to decide the time scale and which we process our data. For the cases requiring immediate response like lighting control, only real-time processing can satisfy this requirement. For the others, batch processing is suitable for pattern analysis. The information can help reach more ambitious spatial planning. 
Next, we need to check if any in the future information will be including as preference should be prior to anything else. We need to be more careful if some sensitive information is involved. In the end, the granularity depends on the scale of data itself. In short, the point in granularity compares only occupants' positions, while the movement records the changes of occupants' positions along the path. The choice of each character should be free, and by design then, you can know better the utilization of data for your application. Uh, in the next slide, by applying the framework, some interesting findings are present in the book. Uh, in the left figure, the horizontal axis corresponds to data granularity, which are point and movement. And the vertical axis determines types of processing. As shown above, safety related to evacuation tends to adopt movement and point to do cap planning. And for the utilization of movement, uh, almost every paper shows batch of processing to deal with larger volume of data. In the right figure, its two axes are monitoring area and privacy. These two are considered highly correlated because of the access to personal information. The upper lab indicates that among all studies, individual information is only collected in public areas. Okay. So far, the framework formed by analysis papers have been introduced uh, to give a stronger connection to enhance building management. A procedural framework is then developed. As shown above, three steps are decided to guide building managers or other researchers to define their application. First, uh, the most important of all is to determine the applying scenario and monitoring area. Uh, why issue is going to be addressed, or is the monitoring area open to everyone? This is vital to decide who the target is. So this kind of problem should be answered in the very beginning. And then after the purpose is defined, in step two, we should determine the requirements of data. For example, the manager might want the actual schedule of the building to reach energy saving. In that way, point in data granularity should be sufficient enough. Now, individual information in data identity is necessary, and batch in data processing needed to summarize the upcoming changes. And in the final step, proper technology for collecting data should be selected. As shown above, there are radio frequency based, vision based, and motion based methods for monitoring in the recruited papers. Above all, the procedural framework based on analysis of papers should give a clear guideline for building managers. To conclude our work, the contribution are listed as a whole. Before this paper is pioneered research for data utilization and develops a preliminary guideline for building managers. For future improvement, more papers for data utilization can be included to further and modify our framework. Uh, case study are also recommended in order to consider practical limitation. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks all for your listening. Okay, thank you, Sun Xiang. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So um, now I would like to invite uh, our next speaker, uh, Raylin Wang. Please come on the stage. Yes. Yes. Hi. Hello. Okay. Uh, yeah. Once you are ready. Yeah. Please. Uh, I, 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 I want to share my screen. Sorry, I want to share my screen. Can you hear me? Share? Oh, oh thank you. Uh, uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Reilin Wang from Tongji University in China. It's my pleasure to introduce my research on reverse geometrical modeling and building, informa building information modeling of a typical Chinese historical building. My presentation mainly including five parts. Chinese historical buildings always have irregular shape, complicated structure, and miss original design drawings, making it time and labor consuming to build an archive for documenting building information. But nowadays, even iPad can be used to scan buildings. 
The huge development of reverse modeling technologies provides a good solution to survey and map existing buildings. This inspired us to integrate reverse modeling with BIM to make modeling more efficient. After many attempts, we found a workflow can combine these two technologies successfully. Uh, the, the, the first half of the workflow is reverse reconstruction of geometric model, collect raw data, and generate point cloud model. Then through these processes, we can get geometrical model in Sandimax, and I will introduce this part in details in the following. In data collecting, to ensure the data integrated, we use the three kinds of equipment to cover all perspectives of buildings. Laser scanner for the main structure, air drawing for the roof, and the camera for the other parts. Laser scanner can directly obtain the print cloud. And for another data type photos, there is a classical computer vision algorithm called the structure from motion, which can estimate the poise of cameras and calculate point cloud by triangulation. However, the opting the point cloud still contains outliers and is too dense. Point cloud filtering and compression is necessary. We use the geometric toolbox to filter and subsample the point cloud. You can see the two pictures. Point cloud, point cloud after process looks better than before. Point cloud registration is a process of transferring the point cloud coordinates of each perspective to the world coordinate. And these two pictures shows SAP can find a transform to align messy point cloud and merge them into one. There are two stages. There are two ways to create a geometric model based on point cloud. For the structural components, such as columns and beams, uh, we created a solid model in Sandimax, just like the left uh, picture shows. For the complicated objects, such as the statues, we found creating surface model by nerve surface reconstruction in geometric is a better choice, just like the right picture shows. And up to now, we get the geometric model. The second half of the workflow is transforming geometric model in Sandimax to information model in Revit. In Sandimax, identify and save the information of all components. In Revit, the main job is creating elements and attaching information. We programmed using MaxScript and Revit API to automate the above process. The principle of our programs will be introduced in the following. After defining the uh, 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 after defining these classification criteria, components can be divided into different categories such as columns and beams. This step is necessary because the follow step geometric information extraction needs to be done in each specific category. Chinese historical building all have modular, which means a set of fixed set value used in design and construction. And obviously, modular is not considered in point cloud and geometric model, causing the error of the set value. To improve procession, the only reasonable way is to set the set value to the closest modular. However, due to the lack of technical documents, there is no way to know the process modular but estimate it by, by clustering. This flowchart shows the specific process. Then, based on the extracted geometric information, use the program calling Revit API can easily create elements in Revit. Uh, you can see the world, the elevation lines. These all can be created by program automatically. The right picture shows the results of element creation. And finally, identify elements by adding number and expand its information, making beam contains more types of information, such as inspection results. The detailed process is also shown in the flowchart. And in the end, we get the information model of the historical building. Uh, come to the application of beam. In a translation jacking project, 
BIM model was used to construction simulation for avoiding clash and build structure monitor platform to integrate all sensor data. In conclusion, we proposed a new framework for reverse modeling and model transformation and uh, experiment it on JED board hub temple. Found the process is very efficient and BIM is suitable for life cycle management of historical, historical buildings. Uh, thanks for your attention. Okay, thank you, Raylene. Uh, I would like to invite uh, the next speaker, Rita Lavika. Hi. Are you ready? Yes. Hello, yes. everyone. Okay. Yeah. Greetings from Helsinki. So uh, I am Rita Lavikka, a senior scientist at VTT, Technical Research Center of Finland. And I am presenting a study that aims to advance understanding of digital situation picture in construction. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, digital situation picture allows all parties to understand the current situation of the project and forecast into the future. However, currently a situation picture of construction operations is often missing. Situation picture is formed by combining data from design production plans and status of construction. This study describes intercompany data flows needed for creating a situation picture for managing the supply chain of, of prefabricated structural elements. We conducted eight individual and five group interviews to reveal the process of managing the design, production and assembly of prefabricated structural elements. We interviewed designers, general contractors, fabricators, and IT providers. In addition, we organized four participatory action workshops to create a shared understanding of what information should be shared between companies to create a digital situation picture. We visualized our findings as a process model that describes how supply chain management related data flows in the current situation. The actors of the process are main contractor, installation contractor, designer and fabricator. The model also depicts uh, seven data flows that should be in a machine to machine format to enable a digital situation picture. You can see the seven data flows marked as circles in the model. The findings on the current practices reveal that the sharing of digital data concerning the status, schedule and quality of prefabricated structural elements is not yet common in the Finnish construction projects. Although the construction stakeholders, especially fabricators, manage data with enterprise resource planning systems and BIM-based planning tools. Tracking technologies are not yet used to collect the needed data. Uh, our study reports uh, seven use cases, which are listed in this slide, which form the basis for a digital situation picture supporting the supply chain management of prefabricated structural elements. The use case number four, delivery capacity confirmation, provides an example. Here, the contractor needs to receive element status data from the fabricator to confirm delivery capacity on time to keep the project schedule. On the other hand, the fabricator needs look-ahead planning data from the contractor to forecast when transportation capacity is needed. Currently, the contractors do not usually share the detailed installation plan with the fabricator 
in a digital format. Uh, data should flow in machine-to-machine -machine format between the companies. Uh, these are the data uh, identification number of the prefabricated structural element, installation order, and times of blocks, transport loads and their orders, and element stages. Here are two examples of the benefits of data sharing for supply chain management. In the first example, the general contractor can improve its planning accuracy if it has accurate scheduled data on the delivery of the elements from the fabricator. In the second example, the fabricator can deliver just in time if it has up-to-date assembly scheduled data from the site manager. We also envisioned methods to collect data in machine-to-machine -machine format. One method is sensor technology with GPS, which was considered suitable for locating the prefabricated structural elements during transportation and installation. Other methods are image data from cameras and drones that could be used for checking the quality and installation location of the elements. Transfer of data would necessitate open application programming interfaces between information management systems. Our study adds a new knowledge to the situation picture in construction by reporting intercompany data flows that are needed to create a digital situation picture. Also, we report seven use cases that support efficient supply chain management of prefabricated structural elements. The use cases cover the whole trajectory of the elements, which hopefully will lead to a more integrated approach in implementing a digital situation picture. The study provides practical implications such as that an open data model is needed to enable intercompany data exchange concerning the status production schedule and quality of structural elements. Thank you for your interest. Yeah, thank you, Rita. Um, now I would like to invite our next speaker, um, Zhe Yun Zhou. Yes. Yes, okay. So, can you tell me? Yes, yes. So, can once you me? see your uh, PowerPoint slides and then you are ready and you can start, please. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jaehyun Cho, a PhD candidate from Yonsei University. Today, I'd like to talk about our research topic, which is construction field management using a popular text messenger. Uh, this is background of research. The market size of construction field management software is very huge and grow very fast. And it has many beneficial features for the users. Uh, for example, it provides efficient data management environment. And it provides also high accessibility to the system based on co uh, cloud computing technology and users can have powerful management insight from the visualized uh, construction management information. Uh, however, still everyone out of construction, uh, out of five construction project fails due to ineffective communication. And people still think that lack of effective communication system and platform is one of the major reasons for it. Uh, and interestingly, from the, uh, our previous research, we figured out that almost all the people in the construction site are using uh, text messengers. And it is 26.5 uh, times greater than uh, uses of field beam software in South Korea. So uh, instant messengers are uh, are very 
easy to use. And by using that for the business purposes, uh, it can be a solution for uh, aquatic phenomena in which people don't want to install additional applications for their businesses. However, there is a limitation to use messenger application for uh, construction management because a uh, site manager from general contractors should collect all the data and uh, manually process it and re-input to the main, uh, main system. It is non-valuated activity. So we define the goal uh, as a developing direct input system environment for the subcontractors. Uh, especially in this research, we have focused on the daily work reporting system. So we set the two ob uh, different objectives. Firstly, we developed a unified data structure for uh, figuring out which data should be shared. And we developed a, a, a process for manipulating on the messenger application about the main, main systems, daily work report system. Firstly, uh, unified data structure is necessary, but uh, every uh, data model of the daily work reported system from the com construction company has different data configuration and different data group classification from the others. So we have collected 41 system samples from the South Korea and the USA, and we defined 102 daily work uh, report related data, and we uh, classified by features and we classify them by the acquisition method. And we can say that our analysis result has a representativeness because uh, uh, by accumulating new data from each system sample, finally we figured out that from the certain point of a uh, number of uh, system sample, we couldn't find the new data anymore. And we developed a process for manipulating uh, the, the data for on the uh, messenger application about the main system's daily work report uh, system. We developed about the uh, data input uh, process and data re revision process and data searching process. And we realized that uh, by adopting chatbot technology, which is a service powered by rules and sometimes artificial intelligence, it can in interact with the users via chat interface. So we developed a prototype uh, as a cloud-based system. As you can see at the bottom side, uh, subcontractors need to only use the uh, instant messengers. In this case, we used uh, KakaoTalk, which is most famous in South Korea. And to minimize uh, the input load for the subcontractors, we filtered uh, input required data by importance. We considered a uh, frequency of data appearance in uh, uh, during the sample analysis as a uh, data importance. And by an analysis of the actual uh, conversation log data from the seven construction project, we double checked about the uh, uh, the filtered data is uh, valid or not. Uh, and we provided two different input methods for the subcontractor. First one is the traditional uh, form-based input. We, we used, uh, utilized the HTML uh, engine uh, in the uh, messenger application. And secondly, we provide uh, another approach uh, adopting named entity recognition. And this video clip shows uh, the prototypes 
the process uh, uh, through the uh, interaction between the general contact users and subcontract users. Finally, uh, general contact users can generate a uh, daily work report automatically without uh, manual uh, data processing. And we are expecting that our uh, developed uh, data model, including data classification and uh, the pro data utilizing uh, the process can be reusable and employed uh, for developing another implementation. And we are expecting, uh, we are doing more uh, machine learning based chatbot approach. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to invite our next speaker, Shi Yao. Yao again? Yeah. Hello, yeah. everyone. Hi. Uh, my name is Shi Yao Cai. Uh, I'm a PhD student from Tsinghua University, uh, and I'm going to talk about the trends of research and development on construction robotics, considering the supporting technologies and successful applications. The next slide, please. Construction robotics has been researched and developed since the 1970s. And in the past decades, there have been a large number of researchers in this field, as shown in this figure. However, the application rate remains limited. Meanwhile, in recent years, the latest technologies have made unprecedented progress and brought new opportunities. Uh, so this study aims to identify the key supporting technologies as well as to analyze the successful applications. The research method in this study includes two parts. Uh, first is a scientometric literature review. Uh, we use the statistical analysis technique to obtain an overview of the supporting technologies implemented in construction robotics. We retrieve literature from the database of Scopus and finally obtain more than 5,000 papers from 1974 to 2019. Then we use the free tool named SiteSpace for scientometric analysis. After the literature review, we conducted case studies to learn the experience from successful applications of construction robotics and their implementation of the supporting technologies. We selected two leading Chinese construction companies because they developed their own robotic products and improved the products iteratively based on the applications in their own construction projects. We interviewed them about their most representative robotic products and their application experience. From the literature review, we tried to identify the key supporting technologies. We fed the bibliographic data of all 5,000 papers into the site space for visualization and the figure on the left is the network of co-cited references. Seven significant co-citation clusters were identified and labeled automatically based on the keywords of the papers cited in each cluster. SciSpace also provides the top terms of each cluster and those about supporting technologies are listed Then we focused on the terms with high frequencies and analyzed their cited histories. We found that uh, some technologies has been popular throughout the past decades and is still hot at present, such as computer vision and artificial intelligence. Uh, while some technologies burst in the past decade, uh, such as 3D printing and BIM, and some other technologies were popular in the uh, in a period, such as uh, RFID, which is hot during the second half decade of the 2000s. After the overview of the supporting technologies, 
we conducted case studies to look into the experience of R&D and application. In the first case, a representative robotic product of company A is a gantry type 3D printing robot. The most important feature of this robot system uh, is the large volume of its products, which leads to changes in many aspects, such as the materials, uh, the compaction technology for interlayer adhesion, and the printing parameters. The R&D of this robot system was initiated by a construction project of a 3D printed landscape bridge. Then its application expanded to many other areas. Company A always seeks cooperation and it has cooperated with universities and material companies. Company B built an intelligent steel production line with robotic welding stations. Uh, they, they imported the robots from Japan and in, improved them with the latest technologies. Uh, for example, they implemented computer vision for trajectory tracking and deviation rectifying. They also developed a parametric programming platform for the welding robot to simplify the programming progress. Uh, because in China, many steel components are non-standard. Uh, so each component need a needs a different welding program. Company B also emphasized the, uh, the importance of co cooperation with other professional companies, and they work together with a software company. According to the interviewees, uh, the maturity of many supporting technologies has improved in recent years, and robotics has become very popular in many industries in China. So many startup robotic companies emerged, so the cost of the robotic services has decreased sharply, which promotes the market of construction robotics as well as the development of supporting technologies. Uh, to sum up, this study identified the popular supporting technologies, uh, including computer vision, 3D printing, BIM, and AI. Uh, from the successful R&D and applications, we saw how the supporting technologies work, and we learn about the importance of multidisciplinary cooperation in the field of construction robotics. And we also found the mutual promotion between construction robotics and the supporting technologies. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, see you all. Now I'd like to invite our next speaker, also the last one in this session, um, Jin Yuan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, um, uh, good morning. I'm Tang Jin Yuan from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Okay, the paper I uh, I will present today is a study of IMU installation positions for poster estimation of excavators. So the presentation will be divided into the following five parts: the motivation and the background, uh, the objective, and the methodology, experiment and result analysis, and the conclusion. The first part is the motivation and the background. We all know that the excavator, uh, we all know that the uh, excavator is a, a, in, a in important and commonly used construction machine on the construction site. Okay, please, uh, to the last, last slip, okay? It's too fast. <laughs> okay, so, um, so in traditional, we need to monitor the posture of the excavator. So uh, usually we use the manual monitoring, but it has many disadvantages. So to aggregate this problem, we use the computer vision technology. And then uh, it, although it has good performance, but there are still some problems like environment sensitive and the lack of depth information. To aggregate this problem, we try to attach initial measurement union to the excavator for posture estimation. Okay, the IMU is considered a gyroscope, an accelerometer, and a magnetometer. But the IMU is featured by the good accuracy, lightweight, small size, and low cost. But when we adopt IMU sensor to the excavator, uh, we have a, a, a crucial issue need to be considered is how to select appropriate installation of the IMU sensor. 
So that means we need to consider the IMU installation position um, carefully for the estimate posture estimation as well as the instability in industrial application. So our, in our study is aimed to analyze the effect of different installation position of the IMU sensor on the accuracy of the posture estimation. And then uh, we consider the instability of the IMU sensor to provide a theoretical basis and reliable posture selection scheme. And the workflow of this proposed study could be divided into four steps. The data collection, the data processing, the data estimation, a, a posture estimation, an accuracy evaluation, and the result analysis. So let's proceed to introduce them in detail. In the first step, the data collection. Um, in this step, the raw data are uh, collected by I'm using the installed in different position on the same segment of the excavator, for example, the boom. Okay, in the second step, the raw data are proposed up through the noise reduction and magnetometer calibration. And then the step of the posture estimation, the proposed data are uh, experience the same orientation filter, the metric filter respectively. And then all this estimated orientation of the selected segment are experience in the OLA angle for better understanding. Okay, and then in the last step, the accuracy evaluation and result analysis. All these uh, orientation sequence are uh, well are aligned by dynamic time warping, the DTW first, and then the difference between the orientation sequence are evaluated by RMS and standard deviation, so shown in this workflow. So that is the whole methodology here. And the, um, the, ex the experiment aims to investigate the weather verifying the installation position of IMU sensor would affect the accuracy of the posture estimation of the excavator. So I bought that experiment uh, device. We use an excavator model, an LP uh, MS B2 IMU sensor, and we install the IMU into different position on the same boom, like near the junction of the boom and the gravity center. And we use the excavator to simulate the real excavation work. Each working cycle starts with a given initial posture and go through seven independent operations. And this experiment was repeated for time. Okay. And then we can see the experiment uh, results according to the table and the figure. Um, we can see the average RMS is less than 5.42 degree, and the role has a larger deviation than this person degree. And the deviation of our experimental result is in a reasonable range, referring to IMU uh, performance evaluation work. Okay, and then we can use some uh, theoretical basis to support and explain our experimental result. First, as a rigid body, the rotation is the same everywhere, and the unavoidable estimation error due to the influence of the environment and the divide itself over weight, um, the difference due to the initial load applied to the accelerator, uh, accelerometer in different positions. Okay, so we can get a conclusion from the perspective of the accuracy. The IMU sensor installed at different positions have no significant impact. And then we need to consider the instability, not affected by the excavator, excavation or not affect the excavation should be uh, used to draw the instability. We should know that for especially for the bucket, any installation position not near the junction may be suggest to the IMU falling off due to the collection. So we can get the result like the position near the junction is a more reliable and suitable installation position for the posture estimation of the excavator. And at the end of my presentation, I would like to restate some conclusion. First, the study provide, uh, provide a theoretical basis and a reliable selection scheme uh, of the sensor installation positioned for um, your base posture estimation of excavators in the future. And second, from the perspective of the accuracy, the IMU sensor installed at different positions have no significant impact. Third, considering the accuracy and the instability, the position near the junction is a more reliable and suitable IMU uh, installation position in the application of the excavator posture estimation. Uh, okay, so um, that's all. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thank you, Jingyuan. <laughs> now uh, we are going to have the question and answer session. I'd like to invite uh, speaker number six to number 11 to be on the stage. And then uh, we have already got some uh, questions uh, on the screen. So uh, the first one is for uh, paper number seven. 
from uh, Professor Robert Emmer. I wonder how you deal with um, oculating objects such as the trees appearing in some of your point cloud images at the start of the presentation. Yes. Uh, thanks for your question, Robert. Yeah. Uh, we are after a line point cloud from multiple perspectives. They would supplement the outload parts for each other. And if there are still the blocked part, uh, we might interblock the unblocked part. Okay. Um, so uh, when when you try to convert uh, the geometry into a, a beam model, uh, how do you identify uh, the the type of the uh, object? For example, the beam or columns, or I mean, that that can be done automatically, or you still need a manual uh, interference. Uh, for example, uh, uh, the cubic, if it is uh, vertical, we we might uh, say it as a uh, column. Ah, okay, I see. But sometimes you have like inclined beams, and how do you deal with that? Uh, for this project, uh, uh, we don't uh, find this uh, situation. Okay. So, okay. So, any suggestions in the future? Uh, yes, uh, it depends on what situation we will meet. Okay. Okay, let, let's just move to our next question for uh, paper number nine. Um, also from Robert. Looks like great work. I'm a little confused about where the chat box fits in the framework. Could you say a little more on the role it plays? Uh, firstly, thank you for the good question. If I a little bit uh, explain about the role of a chatbot. For example, if the user uh, input the uh, messages, including uh, input intention, uh, chatbot understand that and it provide a HTML link with uh, uh, some predefined message and so that users can input uh, with the traditional uh, phone based uh, environment and secondly, if with the users input the text to read out the just intention, uh, and it, if the text include the lecture, uh, the resource contents and, and the quantities information, uh, the chatbot recognize it and but with the regular expression method, it uh, it recognize the entity and extraction the information from the text. And if I talk about the uh, the architecture of the system, uh, the chatbot module can be uh, defined uh, the, what the messenger companies provide, or you can use the chatbot system uh, from the other commercial software providers, such like IBM, Watson, like that. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And there's another question for you. Uh, um, do you uh, need an open API to incorporate your solution with an existing ch uh, chat application? Or can it be independent and relying on existing data transfer? Uh, actually, actually uh, chatbot can uh, make the responses against the user's input, but they don't have ability to the actual uh, the process capability processing capability about the data. So uh, we have developed a, a cloud-based web-based system. Uh, in the, our prototype case, we use the Amazon Web Service, uh, and uh, yeah, so that's it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And we have. Uh, one question for uh, paper number 10. Could you elaborate something more about SLAM application in construction robotics? Maybe with one or two examples. Uh, 
Uh, that's uh, for uh, Shi Yao. Shi Yao, are you? The, the, the connection doesn't seem to be stable. We cannot hear you. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Okay. Uh, because uh, in this study, we used the statistical method. Uh, so we didn't look into each paper. Uh, but I remember I, I read some papers about uh, slam-based uh, robots for uh, cons construction quality inspection. Okay. Answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think uh, uh, my uh, recollection is that usually uh, computer science people use the slams uh, for the the uh, robotics to explore the uh, environment. So with the slam of the page and then ro ro a robot can explore a new environment and, and try to build the environment um, by itself. That's what I uh, know about. But, okay, let's move on. Uh, and then there's one question for uh, paper number 11. Um, it says it's a... a, a what are the practical applications for studying excavator posture? Oh, actually, uh, we can use this uh, study in many areas. For example, the operation city or, or, or the construction city. Actually, uh, only the installation and uh, location and the structure information is not enough for the, for the operations. We can provide it. This information by the uh, objective identification. So we need more uh, information, monitoring the uh, state of the machine. So that's why we need to do the position. Well, um, the connection doesn't seem to be, uh, 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 how to say, continuous. Can, can you repeat a little bit? You say uh, you need more information for. Uh, for, for uh, we need, um, so I, I mean, uh, in uh, many areas like the operation safety uh, and construction okay. safety, so uh, the information we can get from the objective identification is something like the location information or character information. Actually, I think that is not enough. The monitoring, the uh, activator or construction safety itself. Okay. Uh, enough for monitoring the state of that. Of that. Okay. So that's why we need the posture information uh, mm -hmm. to monitoring for the such as the accident investigation. Like that. That's why we do the post investigation uh, other construction. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, there's another one. Uh, it says it's a uh, very naive, naive uh, question, but. Why don't we build excavators which can report their pulse rather than having to uh, retrofit uh, this estimation? Um, actually, uh, you can see in this study, we just focus on the uh, segment orientation estimation. Yeah, um, actually, as the component, the uh, so we need to know that uh, each segment can have the uh, independent movement during operation and uh, we can see the activator or other um, can be regarded as the other, uh, combination of the treatment. So uh, actually we can use our framework, technical framework, finding other relationships, other relationships between the segments uh, in the uh, machine um, to further uh, make the study uh, in the Okay, there's another one uh, coming in um, from uh, Jacob. Um, it says, could you ultimately optical data with data from the positional data from the actual uh, excavators? Um, 
um, actually, um, this time we just use the uh, uh, we just use the actuator model mm -hmm. due to the high uh, operating difficulty as well as the complexity of using the actual uh, app. Um, the the actuator model can simulate the most of the uh, operate the operate the application operation and provide enough and maybe in the future we can use the for better better okay thank you uh, i have one question uh, for uh, rita i think rita you, you you are trying to address the uh, supply chain management issues and you mentioned that it's, it would be very nice uh, to share the information among all the uh, stakeholders. Do you have any suggestion that who should be uh, more responsible for building this kind of uh, share information platform and to check this other uh, situation? Yes, thank, thank you for a really good question. So we also were th thinking and talking with the, with the practi practitioners about that. And, and we think it should be a collaborative effort mm -hmm. between the software providers and also the users. So all the all the stakeholders in the construction supply chain. So so basically the software providers. But of course, uh, at least in Finland, we have one at least one uh, general contractor that is also building a data platform for their use. So that could be also an option that the practitioners start if they have the capabilities to, to start coding, <laughs> so to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So do you have any uh, questions for each other? No? Okay, so uh, I'd like to thank uh, all our presenters. Thank you very much for your uh, wonderful uh, presentation. And also I would like to thank all the online participants uh, thanks uh, for your nice questions um, to enrich this, uh, uh, the discussion in this session. So I, uh, I think this comes to the end of this session. Thank you very much and bye-bye.